able to earnestly ask, so what, can be one of the most powerful tools we have and an indispensable first step in healing when we're going through tough times. In this video, we're going to look at when we should be using it and the two ways it can help us. Hello there, beautiful people. If you're new to the channel, I'm Beatrice and here I'm talking about how to stop living on autopilot and rather stop brief and live life consciously in a way we won't regret and is aligned with our values. But back to so what. When we're overwhelmed or down for whatever reason, it can be easy to get into a kind of negative self-narrative, even if there is no real evidence, a kind of mind-reading confabulation. One example would be, oh, you know, during my meeting with my boss, he wasn't excited, so he isn't okay with my work, you know, I'm disappointing him or whatever, and he's not happy, when maybe it was probably just a normal meeting. Because I'm down, I'm kind of reading things in a way that reinforce my being down, even though there's actually nothing that directly supports that. This can, of course, make us feel worse because our plate is already too full, we're already dealing with too many tasks or too many emotions or even emotional management. And then, on top of whatever is already living is spent, we're creating this negative, destructive narrative of how we're failing everyone and everything in all ways. It's like the movie, we're failing everyone everywhere all at once, obviously. Does this not only not help anyone, it's actively hurting you. In the future video, I'll actually talk about, you know, these intrusive thoughts and beliefs, because yes, we can also have intrusive beliefs, which are a more insidious variant that is much more deeply rooted in ourselves. It's our beliefs and you cannot distinguish which beliefs originated in you and which ones were kind of fed into you but you similarly now believe. But that, as all things, can be taken apart, examined and, you know, deleted if actually not useful. But we will go over all of that in another video. For this one, we're talking about a two-word question. So what? And when you're in this position, that's when this little simple question actually becomes vital. Because you can ask yourself, so what? So what if you're disappointing someone? So what if someone else is being let down by you? Or they're expressing negative opinions about you? There are two different ways you can approach this question and your own answer. One is more about detaching yourself from other people's opinions and the other is kind of embracing the worst. Okay, so let's start with the one that's about detaching yourself from these opinions. The book The Courage to be Disliked is a dialogue-based introduction to some of the key ideas of Alfred Adler's um, School of Psychology. And so Alfred Adler, you know, was a psychologist uh, at the same time Freud was a psychologist, for example, uh, but his ideas are actually quite different. And one of the key ideas of Alfred Adler is this idea of tasks. So you have your tasks and other people have their tasks. So for example, someone's opinion of you is their task, not yours. How you act or what you do is your task, not anybody else's. Because other people's tasks are not your task, you shouldn't interfere in what someone else thinks about you, just like they shouldn't interfere in what you do or don't do. Obviously, we could go into many more examples and details, but this is the key idea, this separation of tasks. So, you know, to put it in other words, you can think about it as you are only responsible for what you do, not what anyone thinks about it. That's their problem. And I think the connection here is super straightforward, right? The separation between what someone else might think and how much you care about it. So what if your co-worker said your work isn't good? So what if, you know, this random person was mean to you on the supermarket or whatever? So what? That doesn't reflect on you, on your tasks, 
how you act is your task what someone else thinks about that is not your task you don't care again all things in moderation you don't want to also reject you know everyone in a sense for example Brene Brown talks about how she keeps a small piece of paper in her wallet and that is actually a list of people whose opinion she actually cares about so for example if her husband tells her oh this presentation could probably use some more work um, it's not flowing very well then she cares about that opinion but if some random person on the internet is like oh your presentation sucks then you know she will do her utmost to not care at all about that opinion. She actually has a nice analogy about being in the arena, but we'll talk about that some other time. There's lots of cool things to talk about, um, but you know, one video <laughs> at a time. So that's one of the two approaches, um, detaching ourselves from what other people might think. The other approach is more connected with stoicism, the one that was kind of about embracing the worst. So Seneca, uh, it's not in this book, <laughs> but I don't have the other one with me at the moment, uh, but Seneca once wrote, set aside a certain number of days during which you shall be content with the scantiest and cheapest fare, with coarse and rough dress, saying to yourself the while, is this the condition that I feared? The so what question uh, in this approach is very similar to this what's the worst that can happen exercise where you actively ask the question but in the spirit of so what if this does happen? Like, is that the end of the world? So what if my boss is disappointed with my work? I'll find another job. So what if this person no longer wants to be my friend? I can make other friends, I don't depend on that one person's definition of valuable friend. Too long, didn't watch. When we're done, it's unfortunately fairly easy to spiral down into worse. One of the ways this happens is by us imagining all the people that we're letting down on dis or disappointing even when that is not at all the case or you know there is no proof no evidence we can point to that would actually support this point of view this can however be countered with taking a little bit of space for ourselves especially away from the people we're worrying about taking a breath and asking ourselves so what and the pretty cool thing about this is that not only will it help you stop catastrophizing it will even give you some of your confidence back because you will be able to frame things like this i don't need to worry about my work so much so what if my boss doesn't recognize it i'll find another job somewhere else or i don't need to question my worth as a friend so what if one person doesn't want to be friends with me anymore. Plenty of other friends value my friendship and come to me for advice or just to hang out. And if I'm feeling lonely, I can always make new friends. So the next time life's a bit too much, don't forget to take a moment to step back into yourself and ask, so what? Till next time. So the next time life's a bit too much, don't forget to take some space to step into yourself and ask so so what i'm still a rock star <laughs> i'm not a rock star <laughs> i don't think there's anything else for me to tell you i mean there are lots of things but not right now but there will be in the future <laughs>